back. On today's video, I'm going to show you how to install one of these. This is a Durali spin-on transmission filter on your Zuzu NPR. Now, obviously, this is my Chevy K1500. I have a video on how to install it on this truck. I did that uh, many years ago, and it has been absolutely phenomenal. In fact, I want to show you something. it up it's really windy right now but the transmission fluid stays look at that hospital clean there's absolutely nothing on that dipstick just pink transmission fluid and the reason is because this filter uses a basically an automotive style a spin on filter which filters down to about 20 microns same as it would your engine oil and the filter screen that is inside your transmission is about a 500 micron it's only designed to catch big chunks of stuff uh, i also have uh, some magnets that i put on here to catch any ferrous particles that are floating around um, but suffice to say that if you put one of these on your vehicle depending on um, well any vehicle pretty much you will, you can put one of these on if it's got an automatic transmission it will greatly increase the life of the uh, transmission so with that being said uh, so you see what we're doing let's go to the NPR and I'll show you how to install one of these on there all right so before we get too deep into this um, basically in the uh, Durali kit you get the filter housing and you get, they give you a actual uh, filter. This happens to be a lube finer. They give you a length of transmission, um, like cooler line hose. And I've got these fittings that I bought specifically for the NPR. And uh, they do give you some uh, additional fittings. These fittings were gonna go in the top here and they give you some hose clamps and stuff I'm gonna show you how to do all that it's very very simple um, so the first thing that we want to do uh, is to put the <clears throat> the threaded nipple it goes right here and there's a long side and a short side you can actually see there's some knurling right here okay so you, it'll go either way, but you want to make sure to install it with the long side down because this is what the uh, the oil filter is going to attach to. So it just you don't need to put any Teflon tape or anything. Just screw it in like that. Now, if you want to secure this a little better, you can get something called this is an internal pipe wrench. Okay, you can get these at Home Depot. It's got a little cam on there, right? And the idea is you stick it in there and it'll grab. Now this one's a little too big. I'm gonna try the other one that I have. It's a little one. And it may not work. This, this one may be too, yeah, it's not going to work. So what you definitely don't want to do is you do not want to grab these threads with any channel locks or pliers or anything like that. You're going to mess it up. So let me... Um, let me see if I can get it to... There we go. So I'm just going to take a pair of pliers and I will apply the force to this. And we'll be right back. All right, so I just got some pliers. You can use a wrench if you want, but I'm just going to apply the force to this. And basically what that did is it tightened this up, this nipple up, without having to grab the threads. It's just a uh, fact I'll show you guys. You can probably get them on Amazon. Um, I happen to get these at Home Depot. Uh, this just came in a set of three. So very useful if you're uh, doing piping or anything like that especially if you're doing stuff like this so this definitely now is not going to come off um, so what I'm going to 
deviate a little bit here is I'm going to show you where I'm going to be mounting this on the Isuzu. If you happen to be using something else, let's say you want to put this on your Ford F-150 or your, um, your Dodge Ram or you want to put it on your Honda Accord, you know, this will pretty much as long as you got space to mount this, this is an awesome thing to do. So what I did was I needed a bracket and this is a bracket off uh, a piece of my lawnmower equipment and it already had a hole here and I just drilled two holes right here so this will bolt up like this okay and um, obviously you're not gonna have this bracket what I was gonna use is just a piece of uh, like two inch angle iron and I'm gonna show you in just a minute where I'm gonna put it I had to just drill one small hole because there was already a hole there and um, if you're doing the exact same Azuzi NPR just get a go to Home Depot or find you a piece of scrap angle iron that's about two inches by two inches or you can take a piece of flat stock and bolt it together there's a zillion different ways you can do it but let me show you exactly where this is going to go and how this is going to mount up all right so i've got the cab tilted forward and right in front of the of course here's the radiator and uh, there was a hole right here in the frame this cross member piece right next to these uh brake lines and i just put another hole there and this will bolt just like that and then i'm going to bolt the durali right here and this will give us good access it'll be away from everything it will be protected and it will be able to uh, i'll be able to change the filter very easily without making a mess if you don't want to mount it there um this doesn't have an auxiliary transmission cooler which i will be putting one on there but i contemplated just uh, mounting it to this bracket uh, you could mount it to this side of the frame here uh, you could mount this on the uh, underside right here if you wanted mounting it uh, you can mount it sideways if you want but I prefer to mount it vertical so that uh, when the engine is off and the transmission is not pumping any fluid then it's easier for the um, when you start it back up it is nothing has drained out it's still full of fluid so uh, e either way I, I don't think it would be wise to mount it upside down um, but either sideways or I think vertical is the preferred method. All right, so I've got this mounted. I used, these are uh, 5 sixteenths screws. That's what the holes are in the uh, Durali. So that's going absolutely nowhere. It's extremely solid. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, they include these two barbed fittings. Uh, I would prefer to have right angle fittings. The problem is that uh, it would be very difficult to get them clocked correctly um, but these will work just fine so you want to put some teflon tape or other type of sealant on there let me get this out of the way and just a couple revolutions will do okay and then Get them started like that. I'm using a three quarter inch size wrench. Okay, that's plenty, plenty good enough. All right, so let's put the filter house or the actual stone filter I'm just going to show you how it'll fit obviously I'm going to put a little I'll, I'll pre-fill this but it's gonna just like a regular uh, I mean this is an oil filter so so I was looking at my other filter on the Chevy and I had forgotten I didn't use the um I did not use these uh, fittings here. I had some right angle ones, so I'll probably switch those at some point. 
So I'm going to put two fender washers here. And I'll slide. I'm also going to put two. Well, we'll do that on the bottom. Just put the fender washers on top. These are 3 8 inch bolts. All right. And then I've got regular washers. I got to get the other one in the lock nuts. Fire our lock washers. All right. So, one thing to note. You have to decide, and you may be asking, why am I putting it in this line? So this is the line that comes from the transmission into the radiator portion of the cooler, goes through the radiator, comes out of this line here, and goes back to the transmission. I want the filter in the place where it comes out of the transmission. So if it were to ever, if the clutches or anything failed and produced a bunch of debris and it went through here, it'll keep it out of the cooler and ultimately, when I put the auxiliary transmission cooler on, I will plumb it into this line. So it keeps everything clean. So that's why I have it on this line. I mean, you could put it on this line, but there's no, there's no good logical reason to do that. It's going to work the same on either line, but this way, the filter will protect these components. All right, so I'm gonna take the female fitting here. And I'm just gonna put it on like this. And I'll tighten that up in just a minute. I'm just gonna put this aside out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing. And then this one goes into the radiator just like that. And it's going to start flowing out of here in just a minute. Now this doesn't need to be super tight, okay? Just snug. This is aluminum. Now if you wanted to use AN-AN fittings here instead of the barbs, that's fine. It's your choice. Um, but I'm going to use the barbs. All right, now let me tighten this one right here. Now most people, if you watch on uh, YouTube, most people just will cut the line here and then put the hose to here. Well, that's ridiculous, man. If you don't, unless there's something wrong with your transmission hose, uh, this way all you got to do is take these two fittings out and if you want to put it back to stock or if there's a problem with the Durali, you want to bypass it or whatever, you just take these off and, and bolt it or um, attach it back. There's no reason to do that. Okay, so now we have to decide how to get the line since the fluid is going here. It's got to come out of here and go up to the Durali filter. So let's, uh, and then it has to come out of the filter and then go into here. So let's look up, uh, let's look up top and see what kind of hose routing we need to do on this. All right, so fluid's got to come out of here. So we have to get the fluid out of here and into where it says in to the filter. And then it'll come out of here and go into the back to the radiator. So uh, one thing that I do want to do is make sure that this is not just flopping around. We will secure it. I'm just trying to figure out where because we don't need a whole lot of hose but we don't want a really bad bend on it either. So let's, um, let me get the hose and we'll do some measuring and see what we come up with. All right, so we're gonna use the clamps that come in the kit. These are just hose clamps. I prefer fuel injection clamps. That's what I have on the Chevy. They're a little stronger and they have a little bit more pressure, but there's no way that this thing is coming off so that's it's not going to blow there's not that much pressure so i'm going to take some transmission fluid and 
I'm gonna put a little bit on my finger. Put a little bit on the barb here. In fact, I'll just go ahead and do both of them. supply of hose here. How do I want this clamp to go? Probably like that I guess. And this is the this is the out comes out of the filter into the um, back into the radiator. Okay so I got it all the way down and I'm not gonna put these clamps on quite yet. I want to see my spacing how this is going to work and this is basically going to come out and then you know I think that'll work good so let me get my cutters you don't want too aggressive a bend in this hose Turn it like this. So there's a lot of options. I think I'm gonna do it like this. And I think what I'm gonna do later on is I'm gonna change out these barbs to the right angle ones. And we'll just slide it on like that. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fill this up. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but I'm just gonna fill the uh, filter up with uh, transmission fluid. Slide this on. Sorry if my hands are getting in the way. All right, here we go. I do have the clamp on the other end. See, these fittings right here are super... Uh. Okay. All right, so here we are, several hours and four auto parts later. I cannot get this fitting right here to stop leaking cannot do it so let me uh let me show you i have found all right so this is the this is the, the can't even talk the durali fittings right as i showed you guys before that's what's on the truck this was what i was going to use when i put the actual cooler on so, um, I don't know if it's because of their aluminum, I, their tolerance is not the same, I don't know, but I found, thankfully, look how old this box is. This is a Hayden brand. Um, it's the exact same fittings. These are actually made out of brass, okay? And I'm going to try these and see if these will work better. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do that. I'm not going to show the procedure of me reinstalling, but I'm going to take the Durali ones out and put these in, and I'll let you know if it stops the leak. All right, well, it's getting dark. So um, I let the truck run for about 30 minutes. The lines are nice and warm. Uh, the scan gauge says it's 123 degrees. I put some. Uh, I took some 5 8 heater hose and... Uh, put a shield around this is obviously this is just temporary um, when I get the actual cooler installed I'll move the lines and put them in their permanent place with some decent looking hose uh, securing whatever I'm trying to say uh, anyway so anywhere where the hose touches something or where it could potentially touch I moved this hose over a little bit um, I had to tighten this up 
couple of times as it got hotter uh, but it's good now and there's no leaks anywhere this right here the fitting that was the problem with the Durali um, I could tell immediately when I um, tightened it that it was a good secure connection so this never leaked one single drop so no leaks anywhere else and uh, yep so I'm gonna go ahead and end this video uh, when I do the, the video on the install for the cooler uh, I haven't decided which transmission cooler I'm going to use but when I decide that um, I will show you guys the finished product of how I'm going to permanently route the lines I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some right angle fittings so they're not coming straight up it'll have a little bit more of a low profile and then I will come up with some kind of cable or a hose management where they're not just hanging out like this so anyway guys <laughs> oh hopefully you guys will let me go in here take my advice this is the Hayden HD 390 All right. I'm going to get one more set of these so I'll be ready to do the cooler install and I will not be using the Durali um, they just don't uh, I just aluminum is just not the right place for one of these fittings so these are steel or brass or whatever but good stuff right here all right well i will uh, talk to you guys in the next video